Hi, everybody. Welcome to Phoenix Fiction Writers Podcast, Episode 21, where it is our mission to create worlds out of words. I'm Hannah Heath, writer of YA Christian Speculative Fiction, author of The Terrapin Tree Chronicles, Skies of Dripping Gold, and Vengeance Hunter. I'm also the multimedia manager for PFW. I'm joined today by fellow PFW authors E.B. Dawson and C. Scott Frank, and we're going to talk about tips for rewriting your stories. So before we get into any of that, let's do introductions. Call me Cameron, if you're feeling saucy. I'm the resident handyman for PFW, uh, which basically means I get to run whatever errands need to be ran until they think of something better for me to do, which I will be happy to do when that time comes also. <laughs> And your his major series is the Echoes in the Black series, which you yes. I will plug on his behalf. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm uh, Evie Dawson. <clears throat> you can call me Beth. Editor in chief of uh, Phoenix Fiction Writers, and the author of sci-fi and fantasy. My two main series are the Creation of Jack and the Lost Empire trilogy, and then I have some short stories on the side. Awesome. So we have some exciting news this month that Cameron's going to kick us off with. Yeah, we do. Strange Waters Anthology is coming out soon. All the stories should be released, revealed by now, right? By the yes. time this... Yeah. Uh, so you've got a chance to take a look at those and see what those are all about. And hopefully you're as excited as we are. Um, I can think of nine people that are really, really excited about this. Uh, this book coming out hopefully there's like nine million other people that are listening to this <laughs> also really excited about it october 19th is going to be that release date uh it'll be available for pre-order september 19th ish plan on that um and we'll make it happen uh i've got a chance to read a few of the stories and they're awesome Yes, we are so excited. So the pre-order link is below, uh, and you can also check out all of the blurbs and all the beautiful covers for all the stories. We're super excited. Um, also, other exciting news is that Kyle Robert Schultz has revealed that he's going to be releasing an audiobook for Horseman, which is the first book in his Crockett and Crane series. Uh, he released a little audio clip of it, and the narrator's amazing, and it's just, it's going to be awesome. So everybody get excited for that. It ought to be fun. Um, October, man, uh, it's already coming next month. My book releases next month. Uh, so it's the third book in my trilogy, my Lost Empire trilogy. It's called The Guardian. It is available for pre-order now at a discounted price. So if you want to snag that, you'll save a couple bucks. And it releases on October 10th, so coming up really soon and that'll complete that trilogy um but also this month um the second volume of short stories are released but it's also available to my newsletter but um in between each book i i released a couple short stories to fill in a couple gaps so that second volume uh released on september 14th so you can read all the things now and as of october 10th the whole series will be out and you can just binge read it if you want but um <laughs> yes we do want that <laughs> all right so as always all that's linked below uh last piece of news is that i have released posters on t public so if you want to plaster your room with posters from my stories you can now do that so yay uh that's linked below uh 10 of all proceeds go to johnny's and friends and leticia's house which are two awesome organizations so yay okay um, that is all of the news, so we can jump right into story time. Uh, Beth, do you have any interesting stories from the month of September? This one is kind of August, and uh, you know, it all together. <laughs> so I feel like, especially for this year, I got to the point in my writing career where I have things planned out in advance, like my writing schedule, pretty detailed, and I really stick to it much more than you might imagine. <laughs> um, but um, I think part of it is just because I know my creative process and I've learned, you know, how much time I need for things. But um, in August, I really had to drop all my drafting, everything I had scheduled for drafting because I did my first live event and it was just like took that much extra brain space that I was like, I can't handle this. So I didn't write like anything new for a whole month of August, which felt like crazy forever for me. Um so, but I recently have jumped back into drafting. So I went camping and I, I did some writing in my notebook, which is also something I haven't done in a long time. 
It just felt really, really good. I think I got about a thousand words, which isn't, you know, a ton, but I was like, yes, back to the story. <laughs> Sometimes life just happens and you take a pause and you go to play. But, that is the darn truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I decided to take a detour from my usual publication. Um, usually, if anybody's read any of my stories, they tend to be kind of dark and sad and they're uh, a little serious. And so writing them can be a little bit uh, emotionally harrowing at times. So I decided, hey, I want to write a comedic space opera. So I've been writing that for about two weeks now, and it's just a great stress relief, and it's so much fun, and it's really just a massive passion project because I'm getting to put all of my favorite things in this story, like weird um, Mexican-inspired cultural uh, settings, and I can make like puns in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> And then I can also weave in my love for, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's just been awesome. So it was kind of scary at first, uh, deciding to put aside my regular projects and go for something a little different, but it's been a really good choice. So that's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. So I have dove, dove in, dove in <laughs> head first into a new awful uh, habit. I realized I'm really, really busy and I'm never going to like write unless I make time to do it. Unfortunately, with like kids and work and like wife's job and all kinds of craziness, the only time I've found to do that is before the sun wakes up in the morning, which is an awful time to do anything. Uh, so I've been trying to get up at like 5.30 or 6 and go to the Starbucks, just get like away from the house, away from the soul crushing weight of responsibilities that just seem to constantly attack me. Um, and get some writing done, which has been awesome. It's been the most productive, like, two or three weeks in, that I've had in a long, long time uh, of just, like, taking a couple hours, writing things, putting words down, which has been awesome. I've been writing a nonfiction, so it's kind of outside the sphere of what I normally do and obviously, like, what DFW normally does, but it's been a whole lot of fun to do that. So, there you go. That's great. I think most... Consistently, I find these short like periods where I something works for me, and usually it's only for a short time. Hopefully, yours will last longer. <laughs> but, but then yeah, I we'll see. It vigorously, and I say I've never done this before, but this is working really well, and I just go at it for however long. I'm glad you found that, and I hope it lasts for forever. No, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I should hope you get some other hours, more decent hours that work better. <laughs> I like that. I like that idea. I don't know how long my sanity can hold, but we'll see. Well, good luck to you. I, I tried that writing about five for, at five o'clock in the morning, and I did it for about two weeks and then thought, I'm going to die. So I had to stop, <laughs> but go you. I'm glad it's working. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So our main topic of discussion today is tips for rewriting stories, which is something that either unfortunately or fortunately, all three of us have experience in. So let's start out by talking about um, what do we consider a rewrite and what makes us decide that a story is in need of a rewrite? Yeah. So to define a rewrite, at least for me, I think it can be as like drastic or whatever the opposite of drastic is as the story needs. Um, I think for me, uh, when I start thinking about like, okay, do I need to rewrite this story or like, if I, like I finished it, but maybe I'm not excited about where it's gone or where it is or whatever the case is. Um, it starts with just like retyping it. So I'll pull up, like I have two windows or like put it on my iPad or whatever and literally just retype or where, uh, where one. And even if I'm retyping what I've already written, it's like, okay, if I'm retyping this, does this actually need to be there? If I'm going through the work of typing this sentence, is this a sentence that actually needs to happen? Or is there a better sentence? Or does this whole thing not work together um, at all? Uh, so that's like, I think, kind of like middle of the road. You can go also all the way drastic. Like, I like this outline that I've made, and I'm going to rewrite the entire thing based on that, which sounds like misery, but it works for people, and I'm very glad for the people that it works for. Um, or it can be just, you know, simple as, like I said, just kind of rewriting what's there. But I think 
at least in how I see it. And for me, a rewrite is changing major elements of the story. So it's like if you're building a house, it'd be reestablishing the foundation and the major supporting beams. Um, so that could be anything from the premise. Is you change the premise or you're changing something about characters or themes. Um, so something that it's like, yeah, major construction happens. Otherwise, I, I just call it like edits or revisions. Um, when my story needs a rewrite, I, I think I think that's I think it's subjective. I usually know on a gut level, and I know that's not maybe helpful to people. But I think, uh, one big flag for me is while I'm drafting, if I get stuck partway through and just can't move forward and can't move forward, it usually means I need to go back and rethink because something's not working. And I will often go back and change things pretty drastically. Um, so that's a big red flag for me is that if I'm stuck, then it's like, okay, start over and relook at what's important and, and do some major changes. And then it usually flows a lot better. Yeah, that's a really good point. I know when I first started writing, I thought a rewrite was when you had finished an entire draft and then you went back and rewrote the whole thing. But recently I've been finding that oftentimes for me, a rewrite takes place about halfway through a first draft and I realize, oh no, <laughs> this is not working. And then I have to go back and just reconstruct the entire thing. Yeah, um, I think I, I've done that at least on one project. I think uh, another example is when it is done and people have seen it and I get feedback that say like multiple people saying things aren't working. I go back to the drawing board and say, okay, you know, if it's things aren't coming across the way I wanted or the mission's not coming across the way I wanted, then I need to really look at my major elements and twist things around. Um, but it is usually, I would say, an instinctual, because I know what I want out of my work usually, you know, and I know what emotions I'm going for. And, and if it's like, this isn't working, then, I, um, then I'm like, okay. Gotta change it. Gotta throw it out. <laughs> it's it's so right. painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, to me, rewrite is basically what it sounds like. It's when you have to rewrite an entire story or a large portion of the story um, to change the story <laughs> structure or improve writing voice or change a character arc or all of those things. Um, and yeah, like Beth, it's usually a kind of a gut feeling like, oh, this is not working. Um, sometimes it's when I get stuck and I just think I can't move forward with this story. And that is usually a tip off that something's gone wrong really early on. And then I have to rewrite. Um, and then sometimes it's going back and rereading and thinking, Hey, like the plot and the themes don't really make sense together. Or this character is just like sticking out like a sore thumb or something that just, you look at it and it's clearly wrong. And that's when I know to rewrite. Yeah. So when rewriting, what do you all choose to focus on first? Oh, that's me that's supposed to answer this first. Okay, so <laughs> something that's helped me is I worked as a writing consultant at my college for two years, and we had all of these long meetings and trainings that were mostly horrible, but I did learn <laughs> a few things, and one of them was this concept called higher order concerns which is there were these main issues that you worked with a student on first before helping them with like grammar and punctuation. So for me, when I have to rewrite, I look at my story and think, well, what are the higher order concerns? Um, what is it that makes a story a story before anything else? And so to me, I've found that that's plot, character arcs, world building, and themes. And those are basically the four pillars of my writing. Um, so if my story doesn't make sense or it isn't compelling or I just keep getting stuck, then I know I need to go back and look at these four things because chances are one of them is broken or, God forbid, all of them are broken and then I just have to rebuild. So I usually start with those four aspects. Yeah, I think those, I mean, I think those four are big for any story. I think those are the foundation, um, you know, um, I think for me, I mean, it does depend on if it's a short story or a novel, because I think my approach is different, for sure, in how I write those two. Um, in a short story, the opening seems pretty critical. So I think, because that sets up, you know, what's driving the characters, what the motivation, what the world building and all that. So if there's something not working, 
later in the story, it usually does. I look back at the opening scene and say, okay, if I change things here, how will it set me up for success? Um, <clears throat> I think for short stories, for me, it's about streamlining and being super efficient with scenes. And um, so I've learned techniques for short stories on how to, if things aren't working, how to kind of trim the fat and, and up some of the elements. Um, but for my novels, it's different because I, there's so much more length and I do approach them, the writing of them a little differently. So um, there's usually some, I mean, for every novel revision, there's usually some subplots that work and some that don't. And um, I think it's been a it's been a while since I completely rewrote a novel because I think I usually have so much material I can work with that it's easier to just kind of rework it to what I want. Um, but if things are majorly not working or like, like you said, Hannah, you know, getting stuck where it's like, I can't get the story where I, I want it to go and it's just not, you know, I can't force it. Then I go back and um, we'll do that. rewrite. So it's hard. I don't know that I have as clear, guidelines for rewriting a novel as a short story. Short story, I know a lot more my process and what needs to change. I think for a novel, it's messier. If I have to rewrite it, it's going to be a messy process. Yeah. <laughs> Discovering. Uh, but mainly, it'll be my characters, I would say, for my novels of like, something's gone wrong with the characters, probably is what has happened. <laughs> I know. It'll be messy. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I think for me, it's a lot of like the broad strokes, like the story arc, I guess would probably be, you know, if you're looking at those uh, things we mentioned earlier, but it's a good way to get a fresh look at like the broad strokes and make sure the story works. I'm really bad in my writing process about writing like four or five different things at a time, um, which is why I release like one thing a year. One of these days, one of these years, I'm going to release like 37 books in a single <laughs> year because I've just been slowly like writing them all. That's all has nothing to do with this. But because I bounce around, which is a horrible thing, and I don't recommend it, I might come back to a project and continue the story, but end up at a different point than where I thought I would. So I go back now and read it. It's like, oh, well, now this, like, this character said they were on this planet, but actually they end up here or, you know, something random like that. Um, so I find a lot of weird, it's almost like my rewriting ends up being a fault of my own, like, character flaws in myself I guess I don't know I do it to myself basically I'm a masochist um but yeah so I end up needing to start over like with Pulse I like had that thing done sent it to beta readers and they're like yeah that's kind of fine so I like rewrote it and sent it out again and like yeah like I see what you're kind of you're building this up but it did never end up I was like oh yeah I was building that up for a thing and so then I had to go back and like I, I guess I get scatterbrained and so the rewriting helps me fix that because once I've like kind of like a big puzzle, like the big like kid puzzles with the giant jigsaw pieces, you know, I like lay them all out and I may not use the entire thing, which is a bad way to make puzzles, but in the end, I have to get all of them out there and then figure out how I'm going to like make them work for the finished product that I need to have. It is a good point, though. I feel like if there's a big gap before I go back to a story, I'm a bit more likely to be able to. Because I feel like as an author, I've come, come to a different place now and I have different right. priorities and different tools to use because I'm thinking about the projects I have rewritten. A lot of them were, it was like a couple of years in between and I went back to it and was like, this isn't working and I can do better and I want to fit in other things. So never really yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and I really liked both uh, you and Beth mentioned that sometimes you'll get beta reader feedback with the like, oh, this is fine, which, like, that's the worst thing a beta reader can say. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but that you guys are able to take that feedback and then go, oh, okay, I'm going to rewrite this, because I think a lot of the times with authors, it's this, like, no, I wrote this. You guys are wrong. Like, I'm just going to go go ahead with it. So that's Understand smart. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am pretty fortunate in my beta readers, and they'll be pretty honest of, like, I was okay, but like, I know you're writing and I think you can do better. And I've heard that from some of them and it's like, ah, but then you're like, oh no, it's true. So, <laughs> so I appreciate that, that they're honest about that. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what are your main tips for how to tackle rewrites? I would say get to the heart of the story. Why does it exist? Why is it important? And why do you need to tell it? Um, for me, that's, 
helped hugely. And I've learned how to do that faster with my stories of, you know, what's unique that about me telling the story versus someone else. And that will usually draw out the stronger aspects of theme in it that help me. So um, what you can strip away and what can you not bear to part with says a lot. You really do have to strip away lots and lots of things that, <laughs> you know, the kill your darlings, the little things that you're just like, yeah. oh, I really like that, but no, I got to go a different direction. So um, you have to do some major cutting. I think um, asking yourself lots of questions. Is there a better way to draw out your character? Honestly, I think a lot of issues that I had with my earlier writing was I was a bit noncommittal. Um, <laughs> so not wanting to be too drastic one way or the other, whether it was with a character or a plot point um, or a certain scene, um, keeping things kind of safe um, and reasonable. <laughs> I think I think there's a, there's a very true learning that it's kind of like when you take a picture, like when you you see an amazing vista and you take a picture, it doesn't come up cross on camera the way it does in person and I've learned that about stories too is that uh, as I write them I need to amp it up a bit to communicate what I want to communicate because the words don't come across quite there's a bit of a diminishing value there so you have to learn how to compensate for that so I think for me that was a big lesson um, about learning to actually have my words communicate and my stories communicate what I wanted to I needed to be like completely commit to the characters to the plot and the uniqueness of it. So um, not playing it safe and taking the risks um, is a big thing for me. I always have to ask, am I playing this safe or should I take the risk on it? And usually I do need to take the risk and it turns out better. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, I think to uh, when you start to approach like rewriting a story, it takes a lot of bravery. Pepto-Bismol, a box of Kleenex. Um, <laughs> really, it's just, like for me, I'm like all about like productivity, both like in my writing world, my professional life and, and all that. But rewrites to me always seemed like a waste of time. So it's like, okay, I'm not really making progress. Like I wrote the thing. Can't it just be done? You know, I don't want to rewrite the thing. Like you don't want to re anything, right? That's horrible. That sounds like a waste of time. And so I had to rewrite my mind to like see this as a crucial element and a crucial piece of like what I was trying to do. Um, so that, that was a big one for me is rewriting my mind. As far as like on a practical thing, I think what I ended up doing for Pulse, especially because it sits like right in the middle of a series, I knew like where I was picking up from where the other pieces left off, even though it was like different characters and locations and stuff like that. And I knew where it needed to end to carry on the series where it needed to go. So I plotted out like A and B and then looked at Pulse once it, like the first draft was finished. I was like, okay, does it get me from A to B in a satisfying way? And the answer ended up being no. And it didn't get us there like the second or the third time. You know, it took a few times of rewriting it before it was like, oh, okay, now I see A to B and all these threads actually make sense. And it's not like either heavy handed or like Beth, you're talking about like playing it safe. Like it did the things that it needed to do, but it took multiple like, okay, I got to start from square on and rewrite this stupid thing. Um, so yeah, bravery and plotting, you know. There we go. Some of my best ideas have been just being like, what if, what if this happened? Kind of playing around with these ideas. And even when, when, like I was talking about the risks, it ties into that of being like, I don't know if this will work, but following it out and writing it out, especially because I'm a uh, trailblazer writer, um, actually writing it out in the scene then uh, is usually where I found kind of my breakthroughs, giving myself that free reign, um, which is part of, I think, the risk taking and being bold. Um, it really helped me to rewrite some of my stories. So, <clears throat> yeah, awesome. So I have a weirdly specific process for rewriting um, because I've done it multiple times for short stories and for novels, um, and it works really well. But it is very labor intensive. So I'm just warning you right now before I tell you about it. So just <laughs> prepare yourselves. Okay. <laughs> So first I go back and reread my story and then I block out every single scene. Um, And so by that, it means every individual scene, whether that's a chapter or just its own scene break. um, I write out the main points of each scene down on a page. I write down what's happening plot wise, what's going on, 
with the character arcs and what the theme is doing in that particular instance. Um, and then I do that for every single scene in the story. And so obviously the blocking out is quite long. It ends up being a lot of pages. Um, and then I'll go back and reread the blocked out scenes and something almost will, actually something always does jump out at me is completely wrong. Like I'll see this theme isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing here or this plot's con this plot point's contradicting this plot point down in this other scene block. Um, so then I go and re-block the story, um, which is more pages and more work, but I re-block to fix any of those issues. And I always rewrite the new story in a new document because I think there's a lot of anxiety if you try to rewrite within the original draft because you think, oh, what if I change something I need or what if I mess up the original document? If you start rewriting in a completely new document, it cuts down on the anxiety. Um, so that really helps. Um, and yeah, so that's my process. It's uh, kind of grueling, but it actually works really well. So yay. <laughs> All right, so what are some things we have to be wary about when rewriting, like common pit pitfalls or things that can go wrong? Yeah, I think it's important to remember, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, Hannah, it takes a lot of time to do it well. Um, and for me, it was really, really hard to get into that mindset because, again, it seemed like a waste of time in the first place. So it's like, okay, well, I don't even want to put the time to it, and that's going to take a ton of time that I don't want to put towards it. Um, but again, like it, you have to, you know, rewrite your mind into thinking that it is an important process into knowing that it is an important process and then give yourself ample time uh, to do that with Pulse. I did not do that um, and ended up like scrambling to try and like rewrite and finish the thing because it was like, all right, cool. Like however long, like two or three months, that's plenty of time to rewrite this, you know, not eight times or however long it took me to get it right. But so I think like the advice that I would have there. Um, is when you feel like you have a good timeline for how you want this to go, you feel like you have a good schedule, like don't be afraid to double it. You know, like there's no extra prize for rushing a project. Like mm -hmm. you don't get an extra bonus, like gold medal on the front of your book, right? Uh, give yourself time. Like there's no shame. Just let it happen and let it happen in the right time. And like give your creative process time to grow in the rewrite. Yes. I love that. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. Um, and then for me, I think the common, most common issue, at least for me, because my writing's always jumbled, is sometimes rewriting one thing will knock another portion loose. So if you go and rewrite something and you think, yes, I've fixed it. And then you go and read a couple scenes down and realize, oh, no, <laughs> I've ripped <laughs> holes in this story now. Um, so that might happen. So you have to be aware of that and you have to look for those holes. Every time you rewrite a scene, you have to stop and think, how is this going to affect everything that happens before and after this scene? Jot down some notes um, to help you keep track and then go and fix them at the end. Um, don't panic <laughs> because sometimes there is that horrifying realization of, oh, I rewrote this and now I have to rewrite this. And then when will it end? It's like this horrifying game of whack-a-mole so don't worry about it just take like Cameron said take your time you'll get there yeah it's a bit like pick up sticks where you look at it and you're like I think that one's safe and you pull it free and then it's like nope <laughs> <laughs> um for sure I think I think for me I found um I am maybe not everyone struggles with this, but I am prone to get caught in the endless rewrite loop. <laughs> so, and I have had some stories where I wrote, rewrote it so much. It is like, I started second guessing myself just that I have it of like, Oh no, but this isn't good enough. I could change it more and I could change it more. Oh, but what if I changed it back? But what if I did this? And then almost got to where the point where, and I could get this, especially when I go back to old work, and then I find myself almost trying to write a new story. And then, but then I lose the old story. You know what I mean? Like you could change it so much. And then as it's over time, it's four months later. And suddenly you're like, no, but then I could completely turn it into a new story. And having to be like, no, I wanted to tell this story for a reason. <laughs> and I should just, I can write a new story with those new ideas. So it's dangerous. And I think for me, especially because I see, I see patterns in things. And I'm one of those people who like can see like the infinite cause and effect of things and so <laughs> um I can get caught in that loop of like 
you know, if I had to rewrite it once, I need to rewrite it a hundred times because it's still not good enough. Um, or I could still try new things. So don't, I, it's dangerous. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where outside opinion is so helpful. So, and I, some of the worst of it was in my early days when I didn't have, you know, a lot of feedback, outside feedback. So it really, that's when you really need to trust your writing tribe, um, whoever helps you out to give the feedback and to trust them. Um, and, and to know that it's okay if your story's not perfect, you know, and cause there's no story that no, so I don't think there's any like, such thing as a perfect story, um, you know, or a perfect book. So you can, um, you can close it and move on into newer projects and, and do cool things with those two. This one doesn't have to, this one story doesn't have to encompass the hundred stories you want to tell over your life. <laughs> um, I've tried that now. <laughs> So that's my warning. <laughs> yeah. That uh, reminds me of that scene from Inception where the one character is walking up those stairs and it just keeps looping and they don't really realize what's going on until somebody tells the, like points out this is just like a loop. You're caught in this loop. So yeah, that really has nothing to do with anything. I just wanted to share because <laughs> I like that movie. So <laughs> I am always down with Inception like yeah. references. So. <laughs> Perfect. It has a similar theme to it about there's no, yeah, it connects. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take it. We'll take it. All right. Um, so, Beth, you had touched on this earlier, but it, it is really important when rewriting to be prepared to kill your darlings. Um, rewriting means that sometimes you have to sacrifice some of your favorite scenes. Uh, sometimes it actually means that you have to sacrifice some of your favorite characters. Um, you have to blend them into somebody else or just cut them out altogether. Um, and it sucks. <laughs> but the important thing to remember is that there are writers who are uncomfortable with killing their darlings. And then they leave things in because they just are holding on to it so tightly. And um, you can tell. Like when you go and read a story, you can tell. Like this is not supposed to be here. Um, so even though it hurts initially, it's, uh, you got to go for it because it will ultimately make your story better. So just suck it up and, and dive in. Yeah, on a comforting level, I find usually those things, if they're that important to me, they'll find a way into another story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, if you're doing this and this is what you intend to keep writing and write other stories, you'll use it somewhere else. So it's not the end. You can resurrect it. <laughs> Yes. perfect line of dialogue you can use it somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> exactly I actually during yeah. rewrites I have these documents off to the side and I call them graveyard documents and so whenever I have the scene or this character I love and I just don't want to get rid of I just copy and paste them over to the graveyard with plans to resurrect them at some point mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes the problem is we think of things that don't belong in that story and it's like no but it could have its own story awesome all right, so we've talked about all of these rewriting techniques, and it is kind of overwhelming and a little bit intimidating. So what advice do you have for writers who are afraid to tackle their rewrites? Mm. <laughs> um, I think for me, sometimes you have to think of it as a whole new story. I, I've definitely had to do that. There was one of my short stories. I knew I didn't love it. This was one that had been years in between and I went back to it and I knew I didn't love it the way it was. Like I liked the idea of it, but the way it was executed, I was like, okay, it's not super strong. It's not working. But whenever I went back to just like try to change little things, it was like my mind was trapped in the box, you know, and I couldn't get out of what was already on the page. So I pretty, I finally scrapped the whole thing, changed the MC's name and age Wow. And until I could get like a picture of, oh, no, this is a completely different character. And um, from that, like the world around it kind of changed and it helps me get a fresh start. And then I was able to incorporate back the things I loved from the original story. So um, I think that I do that a lot with scenes in my novels, too. You know, if it's like the scene is not working, I have to completely like scrap the scene the setting or something change something really drastically to help me repicture it as a new scene instead of trying to rework an old one if that makes sense so um, I think getting to a, a new approach from a new direction can really really help yeah I think uh the uh biggest help to me um when like approaching rewrites and stuff like that is thinking about like when you first start a new project 
and you're like super excited about it. You can't stop thinking about it. You can't like even go to sleep until you, you know, hammer out like another 2000 words. Cause you're just like all like enraptured. It's like love at first sight, really, really weird analogy, but it happens. Like for me, I hate editing. It's the worst part of life for me. Some people love it and I'm really glad that those people do, but now nah, I hate editing. And so like, it, it makes me hate literature as a whole. I don't even <laughs> want to look at work when I'm in the editing phase. And so I'm like angrily like pounding on my keyboard and highlighting things or whatever, you know, um, like, ah, why am I even writing? But then when I sit down to like rewrite, I'm like, oh yeah, I do like writing. And this is why, like, look at this fun little, like, it's like we're dating again. Like we're no longer this old couple that's just getting dusty in a closet somewhere. Like we're like happily getting coffee together. Just, I got to stop with these analogies. It's weird. <laughs> but I think that's the biggest like help for me is just getting back in that frame of mind and like tricking, like almost like Pavlov, like tricking myself like, oh yeah, this is good. And this is awesome. And I do love it. And I should keep on doing this thing. So do that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that freshness of getting a new something fresh about it or a new perspective on it that it can make all the difference. Because I think if you approach it tired and like frustrated, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not going to help me. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can sometimes you have to trick yourself. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, and I think too, it's really, for me, it's been really helpful to remember that rewriting isn't generally as difficult as writing the first draft um like you already have the story it's there you just kind of have to rework it a little bit you already know the world you know the characters the plot so just take a deep breath uh be proud of what you already have and know that you have an opportunity to make it even better which is really exciting so just kind of I know that sounds very like look at the silver lining and it is but it's still important so do that look at the silver lining <laughs> I do think the learning, there's an opportunity for a really huge jump forward in skill and technique and learning. Because I think, because then you can literally put the old versus the new next to each other and be like, oh, wow, look at how when I changed this, everything else worked better. Like, so for me, when I have, it's been a lot of work, but when I have rewritten things, I feel like it was just kind of at the end, like an epiphany moment of like, wow, I just learned a lot. So you can learn a lot, kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. So that is all of our wisdom on rewriting. Okay. We hope you found it helpful. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about book club. What's everybody reading? Um, I have, I've been reading Oath of the Outcast by Claire and Banchbuck. I think. That's how you say her last name. I may be wrong. Sorry, Claire. <laughs> um, I just finished Lay, Lay the Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin and then just started Hyper I don't know how you say it. Hyperion. I must be no. Nope. Anyway. Hyperion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By Dan Simmons. <laughs> so um, a little fancy, a little sci fi. Excellent. <clears throat> I uh, I've been reading a review copy of Beck Matthews's this third book in his Riven Realm series, which I know, like, right here, Twitter is the best Twitter, so a lot of you listening have maybe heard of Deck Matthews, there's, like, a lot of interaction and stuff there, great writer, but um, really, really cool, really great fantasy that is super approachable, but also still, like, in the epic fantasy world, so, like, I think if you're, like, me and not, like, a super fantasy guy, you still find a lot to like, if you are, like, hardcore fantasy lover, you still find a lot to like, so it's really, really good, um, and I've also been reading, uh, A.G. Riddle, like, some of his sci-fi stuff on Kindle Unlimited, because I got, like, a free three-month Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, sure, why not? Those has been pretty good. The Long Winter trilogy is what I'm reading right now. Um, so, yeah, about the Long Winter. Aliens and space and stuff. So, if you like that, check it out. Yeah. All right. So, I've been all over the place with reading. Um, right now, I'm reading... The Rift in the Deep by Janelle Garrett, which I've been reading on and off again. Not because it isn't amazing. It's awesome. I've just been in weird reading streaks lately. Um, so I'm loving that. I've also been listening to Sword in the Stars by Thomas Wayne Batson as the audiobook. Um, and then also I'm listening to an audiobook about narrating an audiobook. So it's very meta. It's by Lorelai King and Ali Muradin. 
Um, and it's actually really good, so that's been helpful. And lastly, I've just been on a short story reading kick. So I just finished End of Clay We Were Created by Isabel Allende. Um, and that was so sad, but so good. So yeah, that's it for me. All right, so that is the end of the podcast. Um, you guys should follow us online. We're all at phoenixfictionwriters.com. We're on Twitter at phoenix underscore fiction. We're on Facebook and iTunes and YouTube and Google Play and all the places. So on iTunes, we would really appreciate us if you gave us a star rating or left us a review. Uh, thumbs us up. Th- uh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and then say hi to us on the internet. You can find me at Twitter at underscore Hannah Heath and on my website at HannahHeathWriter.com. Where can we find you, Beth? So at Twitter at E.B. Dawson Writing, and my website is www.ebdawsonwriting.com. And I am at cscottfrank.com. Uh, not C Spot Run, those are two different things <laughs> altogether. Uh, and then uh, Twitter at C underscore dot Frank, and all over the book and the gram and the Zon. And uh, I just like using the last syllable of things, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So all of that, as usual, is linked below. Um, October's podcast is on the topic that I have been waiting for for a very long time. (laughs) It's writing lessons learned from Batman. (laughs) I'm very excited. That's me and Kyle Robert Schultz and C. Scott Frank. Yes? Yes. 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 I meant to confirm that with you. You can't be Batman. I'm Batman. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, There's lots of Batman. There's Batman. Yes, there we go. Very good. We can fight about that on October. So yeah. (laughs) All right. So we're obviously looking forward to that. We hope you are too. Uh, So subscribe so you can tune in when that comes out in October. Um, Thank you so much for listening to us this month, Um, and thank you Beth and Cameron for talking. It's always awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.